This piece in the New York Times by Nelson Schwartz this week. One employer said four out of ten of her applicants failed the test, and she joins me now. Regina Mitchell co-owns Warren Fabricating and Machining in Hubbard, Ohio. Regina, I understand that for 48 of the 50 years that your company has been around, there was no issue. It's now in the last two that there is. What changed? Yeah, that's correct. This is our 50th year in business, and it hasn't been until over the last two years that we've needed to have a policy, a corporate policy in place that protects us from employees coming into work impaired. And it's this uh, opioid epidemic that we're experiencing, experiencing both in Ohio, but in our Mahoning Valley. It is, it seems like it's worse than in other places all over the country. So. I have a responsibility to provide a safe working environment for my employees. I have a responsibility to my customers to build quality products. So I need employees who are engaged in their work while they're here um, of sound mind and um, you know, doing the best possible job that they can and keeping their fellow coworkers safe at all times. So it's what's been a really typical, big what's challenge the typical for us. Give me the typical scenario of a job applicant who comes in. Who, who is he? Who is she? And, and what's their, their station in life? Right. Well, we have a, a variety of different skilled labor um, that work for us. So we have just general laborers. We have welders, machinists, assemblyists, crane operators. And we build very heavy, specialized uh, steel fabricated components. So we have a 150 ton crane in our machine shop. And we're moving 300,000 pounds of steel around in that building on a regular basis. So I cannot take a, the chance to have anyone impaired running that crane or working 40 feet in the air. We do a lot of dangerous processes all day long, and it's my responsibility to make sure that my employees are protected. I understand that you me mentioned opioids. Marijuana also is, I know, a problem that you're facing, and the testing can't determine within the last 30 days whether it was yesterday or whether it was three weeks ago. I have to believe that as the legalization trend continues across the country, that will pose an even greater burden for employers like you. Right. Um, the uh, medical marijuana law just passed in the state of Ohio. So as employers, we now have another uh, hurdle to overcome. And we're working with legislators to make sure that there are some protections in place, some regulations in place that protect employers from irresponsible employees. employees. As an employer, we deal with thousands of regulations that protect employees from irresponsible employers. And I don't think it's unfair that people in our position have the same, um, our businesses have the same protections from employees who show up impaired. Um, the difficult part about with marijuana is we don't have a, an affordable test that tells me if they smoked it over the weekend or smoked it in the morning before they came to work. And I just can't take the chance of having an impaired worker running a crane carrying a 300,000 pound steel encasement. And as I mentioned in the setup, the, the ramifications of this are probably greater than the four in 10, meaning who knows how many are staying away from applying for your open jobs because they know they'd have an issue. Well, the problems we're facing that the drug issues are just, uh, you know, complicating even more is we have a, less of a skilled workforce to begin with anyway. We, we drop shop class out of, you know, high school classrooms. So I'm having to spend extra time training people. The last thing I want to do is train somebody who isn't going to come to work or be late, has tardiness issues, calls off sick all the time. So I take, I am actually uh, very happy to take people who want to be uh, involved in the process, want to come to work every day, show up on time, and we're doing a lot of our training in-house now because it, w there's almost 12,000 open skilled labor jobs in our Mahoning County. and having applicants come in 40 percent are failing drug test, tests for pre-employment our labor pool is just shrinking and there's you know there right. there are good paying jobs and the opportunity for people in our area we just can't find people to right. show up who can pass a drug test 